Hello everyone. My warm regards to all of you. I come to Balekar. Welcome you to Pawan Kumar IS Academy. I am here to discuss with you the critical strategy required for your preparation of geography for upcoming prelims examination 2020. But before starting the uh, starting this session or the lecture, I would like to congratulate all our rankers who have secured good ranks in UPSC 2019, including All India Rank One. So before going ahead, I would like to give you an overview about this session. That what this session would be comprising of. So it would start with the previous trends in UPSC prelims examination as far as geography subject concerned. Then I would be talking about the syllabus as the syllabus is really vast. I'll try to map out some important topics which you can focus upon so that you can uh, dedicate some of your important time and energy onto the on to those uh, important topics then this examination as you all know would would be comprising of mcqs and while solving mcqs not only information or knowledge you have is important but along with that there is a skill or what we call as exam temperament is important so how to develop that i would be talking about it through approach to mcqs then of course there will be a book list which book list i will talk about how to revise the subject before examination because the book list would be comprising of 10 5 to 10 books and then you would be wondering or you would be stressed that how will uh, you know how will be the revision sessions or how, will i be able to do all the revision before examination so i'll be talking about that also so let's start with the previous trends because why i am discussing here the previous trend so i would like to tell you that there are n number of subjects when it comes about the upsc prelims gs1 paper right you have history within that you have three parts then you add art and culture to that then geography environment agriculture is also the part of it then you have the economics then you have the current affairs then you have the polity and so on so while planning for your examination you have to plan your time table as well like it should be based on a very rational thing that is the cost benefit ratio that by that mean i wanted to say that i wanted to dedicate most of my time and energy to those subjects or to those topics of a specific subject which would yield more marks to me and therefore i would like to show some uh you know this uh, facts to you so that you would be convinced that geography is really important when you talk about upsc prelims so here you can see that in 2013 there were like 14 questions from geography and if you consider agriculture and environment as well then there are 17 of them now as you can see the trend there are almost two digit numbers of questions they are they have been asked in gs1 or paper 1 of your prelims examination now why this is important because most of the question from geography are concept based or these are you know very technically in nature and these technical part or concept based parts are very easy to revise that means if you invest some of your time and energy in the initial time it would be really easy for you to revise it before examination and when the environment is so stressful this could be the you know stress buster or the confidence booster for you so therefore i'll be uh, therefore i have chosen geography as a topic because i wanted to tell you that this could really take you in the list and you will be able to write your mains examination so before that the syllabus yeah of course now here i want to give you a disclaimer that this syllabus is of upsc mains and not of the prelims and now there are reasons why i have chosen this syllabus uh, of mains while talking about prelims so the first point the first point is that this syllabus is very very comprehensive and detailed syllabus i will explain you how now here the origin and evolution of earth if you go through the previous year papers or prelims papers of uh, upsc examination you can find out n number of questions from these two parts interior of earth and origin and evolution of earth and also this you know some ancillary topics which are revolving around these two topics then there was this question uh, about the rocks and rock cycle then earthquake and volcano 
there has always been one or the two questions which would be depending which would be from this topic yes so you can say that there are no questions which which can be said that these are out of syllabus because the syllabus is very well detailed if you go through main syllabus and it would help you to chalk out the important topics to be focused on while preparing for your prelims now also one is from the hydrological cycle so there was a question about fresh water uh, you know deposition or the reservoirs of fresh water it can be considered under this then there was a question of ocean currents waves tides of course there has always been the question on these topics and also last uh, last year there was a question about the ocean currents which also include the concept from this topic also temperature and salinity of the ocean therefore these are some of the topics which can yield you marks this you know it can increase the certainty of the question to be asked you know and therefore these topics from physical geography are very very important and you have to focus on these topics now climatology you all know this is one of the most favorite area of upsc because they ask about the monsoon they ask about the climate change they ask about the uh, they ask about al nino la nina and they ask about the dew formation they ask about the inversion of temperature there was this question last uh, last year itself about the dew formation then uh, also one important topic is of the jet stream jet stream is really important and also difference between cyclones like cyclone from tropical area or cyclone from temperate area now you have seen that there were a number of cyclones hitting eastern coast as well as the western coast this time uh, so i feel this could be one of the crucial uh, area where upsc can ask the question from then about the soil geography this is important this and along with some other topics from agriculture and vegetation natural vegetation are important because you cannot forget that this exam is for civils as well as ifos right so ifos is also important part you have to be you know concerned about because in forest you can talk about soil you can talk about vegetation you can talk about natural resources so you have to focus on this area as well and also you have seen that types of soil has always been there in upsc examination also about the soil erosion and conversion uh, conservation this topic is really important because mostly i would say not the factual question but the detailed question comprising of three four statements have been asked from this topic and these are really uh, questions which would be you know uh, which could be solved with the help of your common sense only but to develop that common sense you have to go through these topics moving ahead distribution of key natural resources across the world this is you know belongs to the mains but i have seen so many questions in prelims examination and that's why when i say to tone down your preparation or to increase the focus area of your preparation or to increase the certainty of your preparation i am discussing main syllabus rather than discussing the prelim syllabus but i am sure this will help you in uh, your examination now here the most important part is about the forest resources yeah grassland and forest different types of grassland where are they located what is, what are the conditions you know the climatic conditions are like and so on then there are certain uh, schemes government schemes related to the conservation of forest so they it could be clubbed with current affairs and can be asked as a question in your upcoming examination also the water resources of course it is there now this has already seen one question about its components and which ministry or which department is handling the program so it is also important now these two question these two parts are very very crucial because every year the question has always been there about cropping pattern uh, there was this question uh, it was about the net zone area uh, that is rice has the greatest area then second statement was jowar has greater area than oil seed 
so this was a very logical question if you know the cropping pattern of india you can easily be able to solve this then type farm uh, types of farming the contour farming the questions related to contour farming or the sustainable agriculture it has always been there in your upsc so this is also one of the important focusing area for your upsc preparation now mineral and energy resources solar energy has been the very favorite part of all the examination this time you know so therefore this is very important you should focus on it then there was one question about the availability of mica or the distribution of mica so therefore the occurrence of minerals is also here now about this conservation of minerals there was one question there was one important question last year itself about the sand the statements were like is sand a minor mineral if yes then which state government or central government uh, has all the rights over it then who has the rights to follow uh, form the rules and regulations regarding this so there was this question it was also the question from current affair because there was a news about sand mining and or the sand mafia uh, so therefore this was important so it comes under conserv conservation of mineral another Im uh, important part here is energy resources because gas hydrates and then methane nodules or nodules which has been found or mined inside the indian ocean has always been the favorite area of upsc therefore this is really important also in energy resources some new energy policy or hybrid you know wind and solar policy is also there national solar alliance uh, international solar alliance is there so this could be you know categorized under this mineral and energy resources and this is really important as well now about factors responsible for location of energy although this is uh, for your mains examination uh, specifically but i would say uh, this the knowledge of this part can give you can help you in solving the statements or negating your options and may and you know increasing the probability of getting the right answer could be uh, you know could have been in enhanced but again this is uh, if you have time then only go through this but this is not as like that much important but raw material is important and also this power and transport these are important areas for this uh, specific topic called factors responsible for the location of industry now along with that there are certain uh, questions from cotton textile but again it was related to the historical trend of these industries but the focus has been shifted to food processing food processing or other agro based industries so you can go through you know these topics once but again as compared to the other topics i have discussed earlier it is not that important but again it can help you in negating your options and increasing the probability of right answer now this i have noted down because these are really important for you know uh, i think that one or two question will surely be there from this geographical phenomenon especially about the volcanoes and cyclone yeah this is really important then in earthquake this thing and the types of earthquake waves these are also important in case of volcanoes types of volcano now here types of volcano should be categorized on the basis on the basis of acidity or basicity or on the basis of severity of explosion of explosion so yeah and of course on the basis of types of it like the names like Vesuvian, Palian, these kind of things can, could be there in your examination. Now about the cyclone, I have already told you it is about the temperate and tropical cyclone or conditions required for the formation of tropical or temperate cyclone could be there. Yes, so this is really important. You should not miss this. You should not skip this part because you could score like you know two to five questions from physical geography and which are very very certain which are very very certain if you would be if you would be able to solve this question you have a plus point of taking risk 
of taking risks in other questions which are you know which could be solved with the help of common sense or general information but again risk is involved there so in that case you are already gaining the cushion from solving this or from ensuring marks from these questions now how to solve mcq as i have been talking about important chap uh, important uh, important topics of geography syllabus as i have already told you the syllabus i discussed was of upsc mains but to give you the clear you know uh, line of focus this is really important if you try to if you want to you know narrow down or you know if you want to increase the certainty in your preparation for geography for your upsc prelims now the syllabus is very vast as you have seen not everyone will be able to retain all the information they have read right and no one should expect one to remember all those things so confusion will be there information overload will be there so you will be very very terrified how to go for examination right because that uncertainty you know increases the anxiety but i would say be cool and be calm just trust me even all india rank 1 doesn't know everything yeah you need not to study everything because it is impossible because no one has defined everything as well right so therefore try to narrow down your uh, your you know your preparation with the help of this uh, comprehensive syllabus that would help you in charting in pointing out some of the important topics so first point is narrow down by focusing on main topics then second analyze the trend of upsc what upsc have been asking if you are reading about if you are reading about monsoon if you are reading about monsoon then what kind of questions were there in last year or previous year examination from this topic and while reading monsoon focus on that approach then yes this would help you now once you are done with your preparation and your revision i will talk about your revision in the later slides but yes once you are done with your preparation and revision when you are solving mcq how to go about it there are certain rules not even rules but i would say these are the generalized statement from the experiences of myself or my friends yes also this has helped all of us to crack all the prelims examination we had appeared for so first thing if you are if you have already you know uh, attempted upsc prelims and you could not clear it try to find out the op you know um, answer key most of you will realize that you have enough number of positive a if you have enough number of positive marks but you are out of the list just because you have surpassed the limit or affordable limit of negative marks so i would say your first preference or your first priority should be on saving the negative marks it doesn't mean that you should not focus on uh, getting the positive marks that is mandatory but this is life saving this would save you from getting out of the list so saving negative mark but when i say saving negative mark it does not mean you should not take risk no you have to take risk because most of us would be attempting 80 85 to 90 questions yes and if you want to attempt these many questions you have to take calculated risk i will talk about that in a later points but the first focus should be on saving negative marks now this is the most a uh, common or most you know celebrated doubt or celebrated question uh, by most of us aspirant oh i have i have been able to you know negate two options a and b but then i always mark the wrong answer why does it happen to me does this question occur to you as well like do you often choose the wrong options out of remaining two because see when there are four options of course your uh, of course your confidence will be high after negating one or two yes now the game is between these two options but most of the time we end up 
in marking the wrong answer why does it happen i'll tell you this is again a generalization or my assumption or my experiences which i am talking about what happened when you saw when you see any question you get you know your eyes fixed or some of the words which you have you know read or you are confident confident about uh, for example imagine uh, convergence zone convergence zone now such words would appear in this statement and you know i know this convergence zone yes i know about it and therefore this could be the this could be the answer now what happened when you read read the question and directly jump on to the option you get this word stuck on your mind and after negating these two your confidence goes high about this is like see i knew this and this is not negated that means this is the answer but then you are overlooking this point as well yes so therefore this happens and i am here to suggest you how to avoid this because this is the most common problem faced by all of us or most of us so here what happened we do this because of intuition because i am having the intuition that this should be the answer right here intuition is playing part but please don't entertain your intuition here your focus solely should be on your logic logic will take you to the right answer why see intuition plays role because you are already anxious anxious and you are already sitting in such a pressurized environment of exam where you know everyone is into some other world because we are just looking into your your paper right so here logic tries to you know somewhere overshadowed by intuition or emotions and therefore you end up marking these kind of you know words on the basis of intuition but i would say keep alive your logic how to keep alive your logic keep alive keep alive your logic by focusing more and more on the question rather than jumping on to reading the options so i would say 3/4 of your time you should spend on reading the question 3/4 of your time you should be reading the question because this has been observed over years that upsc wants to help you upsc wants to help you in getting the right answer so the answer somewhere lies in the question itself if you read the question carefully i'll discuss it with along with the example but if you read the question carefully you will be able to reach the right option for sure and this has been the kindness of upsc but we are ignoring this just because of the pressure of examination where we give priority to our intuition and not to the logic so therefore i would say these are the two thumb rules first rule says in use your logic and second says spend more time more time on question yes i would be explaining this with the help of previous year examination it uh, previous year questions itself now about these two points you know all this you have to take calculated risk and not just the risk that means if i don't know anything still i am just guessing it so you cannot you know expect that you basically will give you marks in all the case then judicious utilization of time sometimes what happen you get stuck between you know this kind of situation where you know uh, two are wrong but two are there then you spend most of the time and then at the end of the day you mark which uh, mark the you know the statement which was stuck onto your mind or sometimes there are the questions like which country opens up to the mediterranean sea or which country has a border to the adriatic sea in this if you know it you know it or if you don't know it you don't know it don't waste your time there because you have so many questions which could be solved with some of the logic which would require additional time for you from you so this time can be spent there and you can get the positive marks in those questions so we can move ahead with the examples where i would be telling you how to go about it whatever we have discussed so we should not forget first thing first thing is your logic second thing is question yeah and third thing is time now see i'll try to explain you with the help of this example these are the questions which were asked in previous year examination now 
with reference to river Tista. Consider the following statement. The source of river Tista is the same as that of Brahmaputra. Yeah? River Rangit originates in Sikkim and it is a tributary to river Tista and river Tista flows into Bay of Bengal. These are the three statements. How to go about it? When I read Tista, I know it flows to Sikkim because it is most important river from Sikkim. Then there were the news about water sharing agreement between India and Bangladesh. So I know it flows at the border of India-Bangladesh as well. So these are the two important points I know. Most of you may be knowing about its source. Yeah, I am assuming that you must be knowing about this thing as well. Now I will go. The source of river Tista is same as that of Brahmaputra but it flows through Sikkim. I am not sure about it. Okay, I am not sure about it. River Rangit originate in Sikkim and it is a tributary of Tista river. I have no idea whatsoever about it. Yeah. Now river Tista flows into Bay of Bengal on the border of India Bangla. Oh, it is correct because India and Bangladesh, I know this condition is satisfied. And in this haste, we try to say that, okay, three is there, three is there, three is there. So answer is here itself, right? But no, here one thing is there. You have to spend time on your question reading. It is about Tista. You all know Tista is tributary, tributary of Brahmaputra, right? If it is a Brahmaputra's tributary, then it will merge into Brahmaputra and not into Bay of Bengal, right? So Tista doesn't flow into Bay of Bengal because it is the tributary of Brahmaputra. It would flow into Brahmaputra, right? Therefore, see, if you are in such situation, even I understand that when you are in examination, you are so pressurized or you are into different world where sometimes you do not read the statement properly or you feel that I have read it, right? But you read it in not with the help of all the consciousness. So therefore, it could help you it could, you know, make, uh, it would um, force you to commit mistake like these uh, words, border of India, Bangladesh, because it was there. So here, when I know Tista doesn't flow into Bay of Bengal, third is gone, third is gone, third is gone. See, your answer is there. I told you, UPSC is very, very kind to you. Answer is there itself. Now, I don't know about Rangit. I don't know whether Tista and Brahmaputra share the same source. I don't know, but I know the correct answer. So this is the importance of logic and question. If I would have gone with the help of intuition, just because I know India, Bangladesh water sharing agreement was there, I would have failed to read this statement properly. Now moving ahead, this one again, it is about the barren island volcano. Again, I told you volcano is important topic for your UPS examination. Also, it has been clubbed with current affairs here. Now, barren island volcano is an active volcano located in Indian territory. Everyone know about this, right? Barren island lies about 150 km. I don't know about it. The last time barren island volcano erupted was in 1991 and it has remained inactive since then. Again, I am not sure about this. Now, I am 100% sure about this statement 1. So I know 1 is there. So 2 and B and C are gone. Now I have to check only 3. Now second is gone. You need not to worry about this kilometer digits. So if I read the last time barren island volcano erupted was 1991. That means almost 30 years before. So it could be a dormant volcano. Right. So therefore these two statements are mutually contradictory therefore either one or three will be there so one or one and three cannot be there and one i am sure about one so hundred percent so one is your answer this is the simple way to go about it now i cannot use you know uh, my intuition here or only thing works here is logic and good reading of your questions now Again, as I told you, first two points about Earth and other planets is uh, evolution and everything or concepts related to the Earth. These are the topics you will find these questions every year. And this is really important because these are like, you know, the bonus marks for you. Now, these are also, this is from, but this is from the ocean currents. I told you current waves and tides, they have been focusing on this topic. 
so this is also important so here ocean currents we all know about the ocean currents ocean currents are either hot or cold we all know it has the role of Coriolis has to be there then role of gradient pressure gradient or gradient of salinity is also there role of winds are also there yes and the of course the role of density is also there yes now i know rotation of earth of course it is related to coriolis force then air pressure and wind of course it related to the gradient then density of ocean water of course yes then revolution of earth it is not so if i don't consider four two options are gone one two three is there see the answer is really easy here so this is how you can go about it when i know the term i'll try to remember what all i have read about it and then i'll try to match it up with this statement and then i can easily negate the question uh, negate the options from that and i can reach the uh, correct answer now on the planet earth most of the fresh water exists as ice cap and glacier out of the remaining fresh water the largest proportion mm -hmm. is now here it is again the simple here logic works like you all know 71 percent of a earth la earth area is of water right maybe fresh water or uh, marine water don't worry about it but it is water right so land mass is only 30 percent land mass is only 30 percent now remember is largest proportion is found in atmosphere as moisture and cloud no it is completely wrong yes and the last one soil moisture soil moisture is in minuscule amount yeah because you all know soil moisture is sourced from rain water itself yeah rain or other form of condensation or precipitation for that matter so it cannot be the answer so fourth is gone uh, and atmosphere and moisture is also gone now is found in fresh water lakes and rivers now fresh water lakes and rivers are mostly flowing or are have uh, situated in the 30 percent of the landmass which is available but exist as the ground water now imagine this is the block of earth or landmass here there is a well or here there is a river or there is a uh, lake but this this area is gone most of the time here is the vegetation or settlement human settlement agriculture land or mountains or anything for that matter is there but groundwater has this much amount of area which could hold the groundwater right so this is the largest this is the simplest or stupidest logic which can take you to the correct answer the correct answer is uh, not this one but exists as the groundwater this is the correct answer now annual range of temperature in interior of the continent now again i told you about the logic right and about the question i am gonna spend some time over here in interior of the continent what i know about interior of the continent it is about uh, the specific here the specific uh, specific heat of water and land as the stark differences here you can see that then here no normalizing normalizing effect of sea is there yes and temperatures are or the climate is extreme in the interior of the continent this one i know right now i can go about it heavy rains in the interior as compared to coast you cannot say that right you cannot say that so this one is wrong because if you consider like the equatorial region there is a heavy rain every day right so this cannot be the answer right so fourth is gone i am sorry about this but the d option is already gone now presence of strong winds in interior you cannot generalize that right for strong wind you need the gradient of course gradient is there because there could be the differences between temperature but here land breezes and sea breezes are there and the coastal area and which could help you in having the strong winds as well so third one is also gone variation uh, yes so variation in altitude between continent and ocean this is not at all logical so last is the thermal difference between land and water as i told you specific heat of water and land 
it is high therefore annual range of temperature is very high because if you talk about the winds it could have the modifying effect on this yeah it could add to it or it could uh, lower down but the main reason the core of the reason is because of the specific heat of water and land now this question mm, the seventh question this was from last year's prelims again this is the logical question here you cannot talk about the intuition it could be possible that yeah i i have heard that Ma madhya pradesh has the highest forest cover so you know then madhya pradesh gets stuck into your mind or you know maharashtra has greater number of tigers so uh, okay so there must be n number of tigers so vegetation is uh, you know forest cover is large so it could be again so again this could get stuck into your mind or then chhattisgarh and orissa also then how to solve this it is simple read the question carefully in terms of percentage of forest percentage of forest to the total area that means they are asking about this ratio right now here i know if the total area is larger my for my ratio will be lower right so and they have asked you to do it in ascending order so greater the total area lesser will be the forest area as compared to the total area therefore this would go first then second then third and fourth so now coming here maharashtra has the greatest area then you have the madhya pradesh then you have odisha and lastly you have chhattisgarh so answer is 3241 answer is 3241 now you also know that chhattisgarh's region is densely vegetated or densely forested therefore it is also under red corridor or left wing extremism yes therefore this could also strengthen your assumption about chhattisgarh's ratio of forest to total land area and this could help you in getting that now this question was very very factual like you should know himalaya has are spread it over spread over five states only or western ghats are this so if you know this question you know this question so don't waste your time here that's what i all want to say yes so don't waste your time and because you know here there is no 1 2 3 or all of the above so it is very easy to negate because there is no con confusion between this thing if you know two of them you can easily solve this question like indian uh, himalayas so if i know about the himalayas so i know it is there in the kashmir i know it is there in the uttarakhand i know it is there in the himachal pradesh then up then bihar and then sikkim and then arunachal pradesh right so five states only you should know jammu kashmir then uttarakhand then himachal then up then bihar then sikkim and then north is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and you know one is not the answer so one is gone this is gone now western ghats are spread over five states only now i know western ghats starts with here in the gujarat right Gujarat, then Maharashtra, then Goa, three important state, then Karnataka, then Kerala, then Tamil Nadu. Yeah, it's already six states. So it is the wrong answer. Again, two is the wrong answer. So this is gone. So your answer is three only. Right now, this question I wanted to tell you, especially with regard to regarding to importance of mapping. Uh, when it comes to upsc prelims also about your time utilization now this question you cannot you know apply any logic here so if you know it you know it if you don't know it just tuck it down don't waste your time here you can use your time in questions like this one right so judiciously use your time here and now importance of maps if you know maps there are two three books i would recommend you to go through it and also you can utilize youtube for this i used to do it we all friends uh, used to do it there are some uh, youtube videos which talk about how to remember the countries you know bordering mediterranean sea or caspian sea or adriatic sea or any other seas for that matter and they give you the shortcut acronyms yeah these acronyms could be used in such 
uh, solving such questions so either you know it or you don't know it yes but if you track down the trends in upsc for two three years they have been asking about two to five questions of mapping on the basis of mapping not solely mapping but so maps plus current affair and this region this region of middle east is important because it it is always been having political turmoils yeah so therefore it is important so you can think about it and also you know about the lebanon this time there was a blast in lebanon in beirut port so you can also focus on that region as well also you can focus on certain uh, seas in the scandinavian region where you can also get few of the mapping entries or lastly you can get mapping entries regarding the south america because venezuela and colombia and brazil all are facing some issues it is there in the current affairs so you can talk you can see the places around this region as well now logic over intuition again uh, i have already discussed this question about lanina now you all know about the lanina and um, al nino we all know al nino is nothing but the warming up warming up of ocean of the coast of peru this one fact can help you in solving this question for sure yes how so this is south america somewhere now here it is the peru here it happens the alino effect right and therefore now you can go about this uh, here la nina is characterized by unusual cold ocean temperature in equatorial indian ocean in equatorial indian ocean and al nino is characterized by unusual warm of course warm ocean temperature in equatorial pacific ocean is it the equatorial pacific ocean it is not it is not so this question is gone this statement is gone so both one and two is gone this is gone now al nino has adverse impact on southwest monsoon yes it has but la nina has no effect on monsoon climate now you have to think about it what is la nina it is nothing but the reversal reversal of the situation of al nino right otherwise monsoon was you know proper uh, uh, monsoon was affected during al nino now monsoon is getting normal but it is just the reversal of al nino it is not as such any phenomena as that of al nino therefore neither one and nor two is your answer this one simple fact of the coast of peru you should just know where the peru is and that's it you can easily solve this question now what are the significance of practical approach to sugar cane product these are just the common sense you know i told you you have to save times on some of the factual questions where you know it or you don't know it and that time you can utilize in this kind of question because it is very simple when i talk about sustainable it should be sustainable from environmental point of view it should be sustainable from my economical point of view right or it should be sustainable from my energy point of view now seed cost is very low in this compared to the conventional of course it is economical sustainable drip irrigation of course it is env environmentally sub, uh, sustainable there is no application no it is the extreme statement of chemical inorganic fertilizer at all especially it has been seen that if they ask you if you if they tell you about the only or at all these are the extreme statement they could be wrong most of the time because it does not fit the logic now see if i want to sustain the sugarcane initiative and we all know our region india has 60% of region is under rain fed agriculture right now if i want to do sustainable agriculture sustainable sugarcane farming in region like that of vidarbha i cannot do it without the help of this chemical inorganic fertilizer right because also india has n number of soil types right so if here this region is good for sugarcane now this is moving towards south as well yes but you all don't know whether we 
in south do we have all the types of soil which would provide all the required nutrition to the sugarcane no so therefore there has to be some application of chemical inorganic fertilizer so it is a wrong question so statement 3 is gone 3 is gone again the kindness of kindness of UPSC see UPSC helps you if you read it in a good way now climate is extreme rainfall is scanty people used to be nomadic herder which of these the region of the world this is very important from the biomes part of gc leon this will help you if you know all the major characteristic of all the biomes you can easily solve this now when i consider this this is my equator these are my three parts yeah if here it is about the easterlies so therefore it, here it will be having more rain then it is the savanna and then this is the desert because water is gone now here it is the westerly winter time high winter time you know high uh, high amount of rain will be there now once it enters here it will be the higher rain then lower rain then very less rain and then again this this would come under summer time rainfall east china type of climate you might have heard about it because of the shifting of the pressure and wind belt so this is the region where there is a scanty rainfall and climate is extreme we all know where the climate is extreme it is in the interior it is in the interior because moderate moderation effect or normalizing effect of c is not there so this is this satisfy my condition interior as well it rainfall is scanty as well people used to be nomadic herders now for herding there has to be two three ways either there should be having mountain with the grassland or there has to be the ranches where they, they could graze their herds now african savanna it is not siberian tundra it is here so again it is not now these two types of these two type are remaining not north american prairie and steppe here prairie is famous for the suitcase farming right of course the steppe is also gaining the popularity now but here prairie was has always been having the bread basket of the world because it has the uh, prairie types of soil which is enriched with the calcium which is helpful for grassland and therefore wheat so this is well developed area nomadic herders very well lace probability and maximum probability lies here interior of steppe and therefore that is the answer for uh, answer to go with now you have seen from all the questions we have discussed the important part is there first is your logic second is time on question yes these two will help you and also you should not forget the brownie point is kindness kindness by UPSC you have seen UPSC has given you such options where you can negate even by single option you can reach to the final answer as well this is very very important to note take note of and again you have seen in the case of all the questions you don't know all the information except it that i don't know all the information now there is a fact i cannot i cannot know all the information because i cannot know ev cannot read everything because i have other subjects to be taken care of right so even your topper will not be knowing everything it's all you have to do on the basis of temperament temperament or on the basis of skills developed to solve the mcqs this will help you but before going there i would like to tell you something about the books required try to do one thing restrict restrict your resources please because these days the internet is full of information which is free of cost and once you read one book for say example a book then uh, you are reading monsoon from this book then again you know you happen to have this b book where you also see the monsoon but two three lines are different and then you'll be like oh shit i haven't heard uh, read this so 
my preparation is not up to the mark and then you go anxious and you start reading this and you forget about this but remember one thumb rule you cannot know all the you cannot know all the information no one knows all the information so it's okay so trust on one of the standard books revise it again and again therefore i am telling you restrict your resources increase your revisions this will help you in your mains as well so simple book by gochilia best or most famous and simply uh, you know very simplified explanation in terms of physical geography and also about the biomes so this would help you this would come handy because it has some good colorful graphics as well to understand now these are the bibles for you because these are the ncrts only 11th and 12th ncrts and these are saying the new edition but if you get the old edition of 10th ncrt it is also good with especially with re respect to the rocks and or overall geomorphology geomorpho and oceanography you can go about it but of course if you don't have it it's okay go with the 11th and 12th standard now here human geography is very very important because the question has been you know seen from coming from settlement geography or population geography there were some questions regarding the uh, club of rome limits to growth or there were some question from the malthus uh, theory of uh, malthus theory of population so you can go about this as well but try to restrict your resources and increase your revision again this will be very very important because there has been a increasing trend of asking question from maps entry so orient black swan it is really really good uh, at last for your world mapping and geography through maps these i am not sure if it is available in the market or online but this was very 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 handy book for indian geography especially from the entries from indian geography because there were certain question like which river passes through uh, which of the um, wildlife sanctuary or national park it was there where are the passes last time also there was one question about the passes which uh, glacier and the uh, glacier and the rivers as well right so this was uh, that question was could could have been easily solved with the help of geography through maps uh, it was about the chenab where barala chala pass is there and then jemu glacier is there in sikkim which has been um, mapped with the manas river i guess which was in assam so again it was the wrong pair so this all is there in geography through map of course it is there in orient black swan but here there are the explanation so you can try to find out this book or if you don't find out this book just go with the one uh, book by uh, you know great scholar uh, or the authored by uh, senior most faculty of Geog geography k siddhartha sir it is also there so you can go with that book as well now this rd uh, puller book it is there it is especially utilized used by or referred by uh, the people who have the optional geography as the optional but i would say for selected topics you can go, go through it like the drainage system of the or the rock system of india or then agriculture these three four points are uh, very well given there and also about the distribution of industries and minerals it is also given there in a good way so you can go about it and also current affairs because i shown uh, i have explained you about the barren island uh, uh, this was in the news so therefore this could be helpful to combine your geography you know preparation with the current affair and now even if you read everything of this for hundreds of time if you have if you feel you have 90% of all the information required to solve the paper but i am sure if you don't practice mcq you won't be able to pass this exam because they are not giving the straight forward question they are playing on the basis of your logic they are testing your logic or they are testing your presence of mind and presence of mind cannot be developed in a day or two it will be developed over the period of time and how to develop it it will be helpful by it would be done only with the help of solving mcq you might have seen people are going for the mock interviews when they have to appear for interview why they why do they go to because they have to have the practice of conversation and therefore they go it 
if you have them if you are writing means you will be trying to write uh, you know daily answer writing challenge right why because this exam is about writing so this exam is about solving mcq then you should not you know afford to skip solving mcq as a practice as well so go for any test series there are n number of test series and papers available in the market and don't forget this previous year question paper don't forget this this is really important because by studying or by solving this you can get into the mind of upsc and you can you can you know derive or you can just guess the train of upsc for this matter again i would like to tell you that there is this exam of capf which happens prior to upsc this uh, the paper the general studies paper of this exam is also helpful in gauging the trend of upsc so again go for this and also this 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 capf examination question paper is also of uh, mcqs so just consider it as another practice session right so go for it mcqs you have to solve mcq now why to solve mcq i'll give you one important thing so it is related to the difference between revision and rereading now why what do you understand by rereading if i have read ncrt once then again i'll read twice then thrice and then i'll be like okay i have done my revision no here you are doing is only rereading what happened to rereading if i have read monsoon concept of monsoon and if i have read one of the facts from here it is very uh, which was wrong Uh, for example muscaranus high which is of the uh, which is near the africa right where all the sub subsidence of uh, winds from rajasthan and tibetan plateau is going and subside there creating the high pressure now if while reading this if i don't know about this if i have missed on to this if i or if i have associated this with the low pressure for subsequent reading i'll be reading the same so my monsoon question might get wrong because of this because i am not cross checking what i am reading or what i have read already so this is re reading this will not help you come to revision what is revision you are reading once first time you have read monsoon then you try to solve mcq on the basis of monsoon if you get the wrong answer go back to reading or go back to reading about the monsoon then again solve the mcq and this would complete your first cycle of revision that means you are doing here what first you are reading yes then you are internalizing internalizing then you are testing or introspecting with the help of mcqs yes and then you are adopting it yes so that in the next question or in the next time you won't do any wrong regarding the concept of monsoon so that's all about how to go about revision and rereading so your revisions are incomplete without solving mcq so i would like to recommend you or to advise you to go for all the possible question almost thousands mcq thousand yeah almost thousand mcq are important if you really want to crack the examination then don't forget to focus on some of the basic topics as i have told you right about the earth and concepts related to earth about the oceanography then about the climatology and geomorphology these are the very very basic topics of upsc uh, you know uh, topics where upsc has been very very attracted and they would ask question every single year from this also the trend has also been observed that there are single line question are also there which are mostly guided by the current affair so try to be you know keeping the track of current affair and combine it with your geography preparation so it is also important now before going i would like to tell you please remember no one no one not even air one is knowing everything you need not to know everything you cannot afford to read everything so it's okay if you don't know everything but keep your logic alive keep your logic alive and logic can be developed only from solving mcqs
which is the part of your revision so restrict your resources increase your revision try to test yourself again and again if you are feeling that some part are you know where you have weakness just try to revise that part only because you don't have time so don't try to revise everything from like first page to the last page try to solve mcq wherever you are going wrong if you are going wrong for say in example of uh, biomes then only revise this part only if you are having if you are getting some difficulties or if you are facing some difficulties in case of ocean currents or ocean tides or waves then revise only this part but how to discover that you have weakness here it would be only by solving mcqs so solve mcqs revise mcqs revise some weak weaker portion and just know one thing that i need not to know everything but i am going to keep my logic alive so that i will reach the correct question because upsc is very very kind yes upsc will help you to discover the correct option so thank you so much i hope this lecture was helpful to you if you have any doubt don't hesitate to reach out to pavan kumar is academy and thank you so much i wish you all the very best for your upcoming exam